shore, you're gonna to have to put in a good shore. We don't want you catching stockies. Yeah, no. Don't want you catching trees. Put a yeah, few I'm in the net. Own, I'm gonna own up to it. I have just been in the tree. <laughs> I've just lost my last three inch hook length. So I'm now stuck on a four inch hook length, which isn't right, but that's it. So what you're trying to say is I'm actually more prepared than what you are. Yeah. Now that is a miracle. No. So yeah, we're at the beautiful Park Ridge Lakes today. Uh, and what we're going to run through is just a few different tactics for spring, spring fishing on commercial fisheries, snake lake style like this. And what we want to do is get everyone out there involved. So if you're out there watching, firing any questions you want, doesn't particularly have to be about partridge, we'll do our best to answer them and hopefully demonstrate a few things. So if there's any problems with sound or anything like that, the camera angle's not very good, let us know. We can try and work around that, change things about a little bit. But... Well, you can see there straight away he's got one. We're having an amazing day's fishing. So many fish getting caught. Obviously, these lakes are solid. We are on the lake by ourselves, so it does make things a little bit easier. But the tactics are still exactly the same as if Yanni was fishing in a match. So, I mean, obviously, the weather's a bit changeable at the minute, isn't it? It's going from hot to cold. We get bright days, we get rain. What is, does, is that having a big effect on how we chose to fish? Well... When we've turned up this morning, there was definitely a nip in the air, but it's amazing how much that... I mean, it's been probably one of the first blast of warm weather we've had for a few weeks. We? We've had all them easterlies, and it's been noticeable. I mean, it's been a while since I've been here, to be honest with you. I've only been a couple of times, and I'm not quite sure what, if there's any colour in the water or... But one thing's for sure, this morning they were look really subdued, and you threw some bait at them and they ignored it, but as the day's gone on, We've started to throw some bait at fish and they've definitely started to have a, yeah, they've come to it. So uh, even today, with the sun on the back, it's definitely made a difference. Yeah, and I think obviously, like you say, the sun's out now, but I mean, even the last few weeks, it's been a bit more dull, a bit more windy, not as warm. Fish have still been feeding, haven't they? It's getting yeah, to that time of the year. No, it's but, been good. But it changes the way you fish, doesn't it? The weather yes. on the day. So, I mean, maybe a week ago you might have been looking at fishing in the deep water, but today that's obviously a non-starter, isn't it? That's right. I mean, I mean the beauty of this venue. I mean, you know, limited snake lakes are like from where I come from. So week in, week out, we're fishing more open water. But already here, you've got so many options. It's the first thing that sort of like you've got, re you've got the green reed beds, you've got overhanging, yeah, brambly like type bushes, which obviously you get like one or two bits of scum that sort of hang around them, like where I'm fishing there at the moment. So that sort of acts as a canopy coming over the water, where then you've got the green reed beds. I mean, we've caught fish all over the place. Obviously, we've started in, again, in like sort of a mud line and we've caught fish there. But to be honest with you, because of the sun and because of the conditions, we've found it best to just catch under that tree, haven't we? It's just, it's just given that little bit of little bit of a canopy of shelter and it's definitely been there uh, well it's been, amazing. it's been really good yeah i mean obviously if you had like a ripple or something you maybe look at fishing shallow down the middle but definitely something over the head is making a massive difference yeah. isn't it and well i mean that one was very shallow you, wasn't you it can see, can't and you? there we go straight away again and i'm sure maybe next time we ship out we can maybe get a bit closer in on the floor uh, we have actually got the ability to get close up, so we should get some really good shots, I think, while we're doing this. Yeah. But I think if we can get close in on the floor and you can see exactly what you're doing and how you're fishing, um, and then we'll maybe have a little bit of a chat about the rigs. I'll keep an eye on my phone, so if anyone has got any questions, obviously I can, um, I can get them up on my phone and ask those as well. But when it comes to rig choice, I know you're a, you're a big believer generally in setting up a lot well, of different types of rigs. Go on, you Go can on. say I'm <laughs> I wouldn't have ever said such a thing. But yeah, you're, you're a big believer in being ultra prepared, ultra prepared aren't you? You're all different rigs for yeah. different situations. And, and the rig you're using now for fishing over there is different to if you were, say, fishing in open water or fishing down the edge. That's right, yeah. Yeah, well, fixed rigs, I mean, obviously there's this area, this area, there's like up and down this area of, the, uh, of um, you know, Manchester and whatever, a lot of the venues, you know, that you're, you're able to fish the jiggers and certain types of, yeah, overshotted rigs. Overshotted yeah. rigs and things like that, which is something I've sort of kept away with. I mean, you know, everybody's choice. But so obviously, if you're going into that, then obviously the fixed rigs, you can't just have one rig to fish a certain depth. You've got to have all different um, depths of rigs. Yeah. And different then obviously, styles of floats. different styles of floats. And then you've also then got the I different mean, weights of floats. If, you know. if this time we can maybe get close in on your floor, and I think it'll be good to show what you're trying to achieve because this type of rig, really, you're wanting them to try and hook themselves, aren't you? You're still, you're still fishing for self-hooking fish, but 
there is there is time, especially when you're fishing short. I mean, we've done it today, we've been down the edge and we've fished little brittle slopes and we've been striking at bites. You know, again, a lot of them have been self-hooking, but we've definitely been, uh, you know, we've definitely caught some fish, that, you know, actually striking at bites. And, it, and you know, you can just catch a few, you know, a little bit quicker at yeah. times on that. Yeah, definitely. And uh, obviously you can see the indications there. The one thing I like, I don't often fish these overshotted and jigger rigs either. And the thing I like with a float that I can see and it's settled is, I think you can read what's going on in your peg. Yeah. So I mean, if you watch your float now, you're getting indications and that, obviously that one's up itself, but you're getting a few indications and that's yeah. telling you a story about what's happening, isn't it? And giving you an idea of what you need to do next. Yeah. So I mean, watching your float there, what are you thinking now? Big thing for me, big thing for me, Adam, is that it's a, it's just a minimal strike. I mean, what it is, if you can picture it under the water, that caster is literally, he's, you know, he's sucked it in and blown it out. So he's literally, he's only an inch away from the, you know, from the bait. So if you can actually just sort of, such a little gentle lift, you know, we've done it today, haven't we? And it's been a case of, it, it literally teased it in front of its face. Even though we've missed the first indication, I'm sure he sucked it in and blew it out because the, the rig was, was static it's come to its depth it's sat there the fish have come up blown it blown it out but because we've just lifted up because we haven't done a you know a full strike or we've lifted the rig out the water we've literally half a float out the water yeah. at most is literally then we've like the fish is just snatched at it on the way back down and then that can give you two things it can give you a self hooking bite or it settles and it just dinks and you and you strike on it you just know, induces so you, a bite just doesn't try, it yeah exactly, exactly and i think as well that is when you see people fishing a jigger, for example, yeah. you're sort of replicating exactly. that same type of approach, that same type of presentation, aren't you? Yeah. And that's with this rig, obviously fishing under that cover, you could even maybe shorten that line down a bit more, make yeah. it slightly more self-hooking. Uh, I know you like a little bit of line above your float though, don't you, compared to what a lot of people might do? Yeah, I mean, they have actually moved, they've come up in the water the last 20 minutes, half an hour, and my rig's probably not quite, I mean, I've got one or two other rigs that we can probably go through in a bit, but this one's, uh, you know, still catching plenty of fish yeah. with it, you know. But there is, but again, you know, we find dividing lines between winning matches, coming first and second, winning sections. These, you know, these these are the things that can make the difference. Yeah. Tiny amounts. And obviously, we'll go back out again now. We'll try and see what you're doing. And if we can see them bites, they might see if it's the same as last going. You get a few indications. And I would imagine if you keep getting indications like that for a few chucks in a row, then you might look at changing something, I guess. Maybe yeah. changing your shot and changing your depth. And just slightly changing your your approach to what you're doing, but that all them signs on the float are telling you these things, aren't they? That's right. So I mean, if you just talk through now was what's happening on your float, and just let, well, <laughs> I think we can see what's happening on his float that time. Again. Um, that one was on, wasn't it? But I mean, if you looked at that, we were talking about these indications on his float, and maybe showing the fish are slightly shallower, possibly. I tell you what, that's a beautiful fish, isn't it? Yeah, a little ghosty, isn't it? Look like at him. Left one ghosty. Yeah, and you could see it was lowering his float in that time and it went under, so that maybe tells you again the fish are slightly shallower possibly, are they? Yeah, that's right. I mean, they are some of the signs that you've got to read and, you know, so it sort of prepares you for your next cast. I mean, that's for me what, you know, again, going back to the fixed rigs, it's all about thinking about what you're going to do in your next cast. So if you miss two or three bites, for me, they've come shallower, maybe only an inch or two, so I can do it. So like now I can actually just shelf that up an, that up an inch. If I miss four bites, I would probably come up two inches. If I miss three bites, probably an inch and a half, two bites, an inch. Um, and that's sort of like, so again, if I'm not getting the bites, if I have to wait a little bit longer, there's little things that you can do. So basically they just drop down in the water a little bit. So for me, I can, once I've caught the fish, if I don't feed, for me, I think they'll come up and look for some bait, which then eventually I'll catch one. Cause we're doing this from like cast to cast. So for me, if you're not getting a bite, they've dropped a little bit deeper, catch the next one, however you've got to catch it. And then when you come in, then you can go again. You can go, if it took 10, 15, 20 seconds to catch that next one, I'll probably move up two inches, deepen up two inches, and then see what the information you get off that. So if it takes me, again, if I miss two or three bites, if I miss one bite, then I adjust accordingly. So. Yeah, so I mean, with the beauty about this and it being live is you can go out now and you can talk people through yeah, exactly yeah. what's happening as you're doing it, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, there and you could see we just held it, we just held the float out of the water, which again, you know, for that particular um, cast, felt from the previous cast, it was probably missed four bites before actually up to fish. I mean, you're only talking yeah. about probably 15 seconds between the first bite 
to the missing paw bite to act as a skin of fish, which is great. But if we can get it to five seconds, two seconds, then yes. again, we talk about, you know, small margins now in this, fishing, this style of fishing. Yeah, I mean, in an ideal world, what you want to do is drop it in, and the only indication you get is on, don't you? Yeah. That'd be it. But fishing's not that simple, is it? You're never just going to be able to go in that easy. That's right. So, well, <laughs> maybe you are if you you. No, I did feed that time on purpose just to sort of show it that that settled and, and had a bite straight away and I ate the first bite then. So for me, that's the fish I haven't, I haven't rattled a few casters in just again to make them compete and come up because I've just not, there was enough fish there for me to just to go out and literally not feed. They've dropped a couple of three inches, perfect to the depth that I was fishing and I got a lovely clean bite. First time it's dipped under. Yeah, yeah and that that was like a perfect demonstration yeah. i suppose wasn't it yeah and i think you can feed it's all well and good now i'm very guilty of this i tend to quite often get a bit carried away with feeding and it is easy to feed too often the fish come a little bit too shallow and things can be a bit erratic almost can't they yeah fish everywhere in your peg not settled down enough um, and you'll get your really really good spells but it's often not quite as consistent that's right exactly so just one quick thing I'm trying to keep an eye on my phone, check if anyone's asking questions and that type of thing. Um, if someone could just maybe send a couple of messages, because I'm not getting anything. Oh, no. Sorry, there's some stuff coming up now. So I've got a quick question from Carl Ratcliffe here. And he says, hello, when fishing canal commercials, what do you think about fishing down the shelf and the best lines to be fishing? Okay, Carl. So, um, I mean time of year i mean knowing the venue stars are fishing i mean you know maybe even the weights that you're looking for to actually like you know to win the competition a certain weight you know if, if, if the weights are in excess of 100 pounds like a lot especially this time of year into spring now again you know maybe the last couple of weeks it's been a little bit more on the deck fishing so you know the, the shallow fishing's probably not come into it so you probably be looking at 80 90 100 pounds where once the sun's come out like this weekend i wouldn't expect to be you know to be matches won all over the country with 100 120 140 pounds i mean it's, it's just gone perfect for this weekend um so you've sort of got to target your shallow fishing you know it's you know it's like for me on especially on snake lakes or any any f1 style venues you've got to target shallow fishing or margin fishing if you don't catch on them two one of them two lines at certain time you don't get a golden run on them one of them lines you're not going to possibly win the match not going to frame obviously you know obviously during the match you're going to come to a decision where you're going to think that you're going to have to drop in down in the shelf and then you, you, you know your match changes slightly but you've still got to try and catch in as shallow a water as possible so you just get cleaner and cleaner bites all day you know you're only looking to catch one fish at a time so for me it's a case of um you know you're looking to catch in the shallower water for, for a start off if you start to get too many indications foul up fish then you've got to try and target going shallow fishing and then coming into the margins again depending on the depths and the, the conditions that you've got very very similar you've got a little bit deep water down the edge then maybe you have to wait a little bit longer to catch shallow, but when you get that run, it's a really good running, a golden run, you know. So, yeah, really that, it's, uh, that's probably the two sort of, like, of advice I can give. Yeah, I think from my point of view, very similar to what you've just said, one thing to look out for is sort of areas of your peg that look like they're going to hold fish. So, I mean, if you look over to this far bank where Yanni's fishing at the minute and there's some lips just come out next yeah, to his floor, cool. actually. Um, when you look at that area he's fishing, it's full of cover and it's just a natural area that fish are going to want to sit. So there's a bush there, there's some reeds. And where he's actually fishing now is probably sort of still three to four foot deep. So there's plenty of water above them. And you've got a volume of water for the fish to sit in without spooking. Yeah. When you might go closer to the further bank or closer in down the edge, the water becomes shallower. You don't get as many fish in that depth because there's not the volume of water to hold them. But what it does allow you to do is pick a fish off really easy. So if you're fishing on the bottom and the fish want to come in, the shallower the water you can catch them in, generally the easier they are to catch. Don't get as many come in causing your liners. When you want them to catch shallow, you want deeper water, maybe a bit of cover like we've got today, and that gives you the volume of water to get a lot of fish there competing. And that's obviously what you need for shallow fishing, isn't it? Yeah, it's finding that balance, isn't it, between the weight that you're going to need to initially probably like win the section, but obviously then if you're you are drawn a good peg and the conditions are right and the fish are then you can start feet you can start thinking about winning the match and obviously your tactics change accordingly. So just after you catch this next fish just had a message from Stephen Ward he's just wanting you to show the rig 
So again, oh, I think, oh, oh no. we might lose I'm the rig here. No, he's not. He was in a branch. <laughs> so we'll ship back. Once he lands this next fish, I'm sure we'll get one. We'll show you the rig. Uh, that's the beauty of doing this live again. I mean, we've got someone, we've got Barry behind the camera. He can zoom in on things. He can show us exactly what you want to see. So he'll catch this fish. He can show you the rig and obviously tell you his thoughts on it. But maybe when you come back as well, you can show a couple of other rigs and, yeah. and give people an idea on them. We'll keep firing a bit of bait because I'm sure people want to see a few being caught as well, don't they? So I think <laughs> yeah. perfect time to show the rig then. Yeah, so we've just got a very very simple dibble dibber style method. Probably one of the most important things with the uh, with the dibber is the actual length of it. So we've got a, we've got a prototype frenzy float here that we've been you know we've been uh, running through its paces today and very short very short uh, dibber. Obviously, it allows you then to fish the short the you know the um, the shallower depths. When the fish actually come up, so it's all in proportion with your with your actual floats. Uh, I've actually just got these strung out actually at the moment. Again, I've, I've, run, I've run out of short hook length, so I've had to sort of like chuck a, chuck a shot on the hook length, and uh, it's probably not the most ideal. But today, probably the best rig's been probably 12 to 14 inches, three inch hook length, uh, three number tens. Uh, still been, you know, still been not had to be really, really like 311s, 312s, something like that. So still been able to be quite positive. Um, just a little look, just a straightforward loop to loop hook length, three inch hook length. I've got them spread actually there at the moment, but maybe if I got a short hook length on, I would just bulk them down. Got a very small back shot just above it, just to allow me just to hold on to the back shot to keep everything nice and straight and tight in between the float and the uh, and the and the dacron. So it's quite a simple, quite a simple rig. But I suppose the most important thing is the length of float. You know, I mean, you know, we've got had the fish have come up to six inches. I mean, at the moment they've actually like last half an hour. We've probably not quite set the rigs up. We've got a couple here that maybe we can go through, can't we? Let's. Yeah. I mean, can through. I just have a look at that rig as well first? Then just I'll maybe just mention a little difference between between how Yanni fishes with his and I fish with mine. And I think the difference with it is, I think Yanni's rig gets a few more bites maybe doesn't hook as big a percentage yeah. where the way i fish i probably hook a few more higher percentage of my bites but i don't think i get quite as many bites and drawing a line between them two things and getting in between is probably the ideal place to be isn't it absolutely so i mean yeah. my setup obviously like he says he's got a shot on his hook length here my setup would be just a solid bulk here straight above the hook length and then i'd have my float this is a point one i generally use a point two so my bulk will take maybe five number nine shots and then if i destroy his rig a little bit where it's allowed i'll fish with a really really short line in this bit i do away with that back shot and have maybe an inch or two there above the float so then i have my dibber which would be a point two instead of this i'd come down to my hook length and i'd have a bulk of number nine shot and then a short three inch hook length and the way i fish is all about keeping everything very very tight so if i've got a good amount of shot here above my hook length and a really short length of line there above it the only bits of line that are slack Everything here is tight because of my shot. My float will be dotted right down. And I've only got this little slack bit of line above my float and anything that's below my shot. And I end up with a really, really direct rig. And almost every bite I get, I'll just pull my elastic out. There'll be no striking. It's a real bolt rig. But I can also see them sort of missed bites and indications if I'm getting liners. But like I said, I think this way of fishing, how Yanni fishes, probably does get you more bites where I'm maybe hooking a slightly higher percentage. So there is other ways to go about it. The rigs are very similar, but just work slightly different. So there's definitely more than one way to approach it, isn't Absolutely. there? We're both confident in, yeah. in sort of a different way of fishing. You can have this rig think, back that I've think, bodged up now. <laughs> I think if we can, if we can uh, sort of comp um, combine both the methods, I mean, then, you know, then gives you just start giving yourself more options, you know? So, you know, I mean, I mean, I do set rigs up very similar to what you do, maybe a bit more on the inline method with something like that. Yeah. inline float so you've got the shots just above it and everything's just held tight and again that is like a, gen, a, you know, a really really like bolty type rig another rig i'd like you know this is one for me i'm massive fan of and over the years it's been really really you know it's probably been my favorite rig to fish but it's probably not so much across um against some of these snake lakes you know maybe i can still use them in open water but it's a very, very fine little, I call them the left one shallow floats. Again, these are prototype floats that hopefully we're going to be able to bring out. Uh, we will be bringing them out in due course. Uh, this one takes three number 12 barrel shot. Again, I've got a little three inch hook length on. And for me, this one, I mean, 
and over the years it's one that I can actually strike at bites. I mean, for me, if I'm only fishing, um, especially on these snake lakes, you know, you've got some of these types of cover and you've got three foot against them, the fish come right up against these green reed beds and you don't have to feed a great deal, you know, when you've got these, this bit of cover, you're only feeding like six to eight, ten, maybe twenty casters maximum and I found that you can actually just strike at the bites where anything other than, you know, sometimes if you've got a, uh, that's, put, that's a white, it's a put one mil bristle and anything like 1.5 or 1.75 which is probably a more commonly used float now uh, just it feel like you miss, miss a few more bites so for me a uh, real nice little delicate rig and you know I feel for sure that you'll you'll find that you'll hook more bites you know so something just to like bear in mind it's been really good to me over the years that's for sure and I think that rig's probably all about where on the other rigs we're looking for a bit of resistance and the fish to hook yeah. themselves, that's all about lack yeah. of resistance, isn't it? Yeah. Nothing for the fish to feel and sort of them picking it up really freely, yeah. which is why they're not so much hooking themselves, but you've got to strike. But yeah, both rigs, I mean, that was working brilliantly down the edge earlier, wasn't it? it? Totally different to how I ever fish, really, yeah. but when I was watching you, you could see it was yeah. just it was just really working well. You've got a lot of indications on it, yeah. maybe to go under and you lifted it, and like you spoke about out there and demonstrated, you'd lift it on yeah. your strike, nothing on, drop it back in, they go straight under as if the bait's come up past the fish's nose, drop straight back past, well, snatch yeah. at it, and, yeah. and there we go. And combine that with your regular feed, and then you're mimicking exactly, exactly what's happening with your loose feed, aren't you? It's something I probably didn't touch on was with these particular floats, uh, certain, it's ideal in certain depths, and that is probably you know anything from as shallow as they can be, but obviously the float dictates your, and your hook lengths and, your, and everything else that dictates how shallow you can actually fish, but probably seven inches to, 13 inches but I'll probably say 9, 10, 11 inches is probably as deep as I'd want to fish to get there you know to, for them to really like shine out you know that's when I've had my best results with them so if you're fishing in between 7 and 9, 11 inches maximum they really do um, and I'll probably set four or five of these up so I'll have one set at five six inches one seven inches 190 because the other thing you've got to mention is is because a lot of the a lot of the um, fisheries now the last limits it you know obviously that plays a big part so here at uh, partridge there isn't, no. there, isn't actual, no. there isn't a last limit is there the lashes are the, you know the, the distance between the tip of your float but body of your float and the and the dacron connector so again this allows you you know them f1s are so cute and because i'm only using a very small amount of light weight actually on the float it, i'm not showing up the indication as quick as because it's not as direct you know it's not as straight because i've only got three i've only got three 12 barrel shots on there um barrel shots of you know is the, is the frenzy one for the like very similar to the stock shots and um so it is a little bit you know it, you know, it will be a little bit um dangly through the air you know so you're not going to get that straight that rio if you had three number 10 shots there so the depth is important with these light floats. So anything above 11 inches, 12 inches on them type of rigs, you've probably got just too much fluff there to be indication and you will still miss a few bites. But once you start to get to that killing depth, then these rigs really do come into the own for me. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I felt like you probably wanted to be maybe an inch or two deeper than where the fish has sat. So yeah. when you have that little strike and miss one, it's fluttering yeah. back past the fish, yeah. isn't it? But I think people are probably sick of us yeah. going on now. They want, probably want to see you catch another catch fish. Go fish. and catch yeah. a couple more. Yeah, I'm sure he'll manage to catch some more. I've got another question you can answer as you're fishing here, I think. Uh, it's Cal Ratcliffe again, and he says he loves match fishing. What is your number one advice when in a match wanting to win, but you're not always near the top? So I think probably your number one tip for improving the results, giving him a chance of winning. Depending on where you fish, Carl, um, you know, the style of fishing that you do, it's Oh, I've got uh, your pole. Style, the style of fish that you're doing, um, you know, the, if, the, if there is somebody on the fishery that is doing really well, you know, making contact with him, trying to feed a bit of information from him, uh, and how he's is actually, he's, how he's actually so, caught. So, have you changed your rig now? Have you gone for the, oh, yeah. the bristle Sorry, one? Yeah, of course, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was going to talk to Carl. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so if you can get some information from whoever's won the match and how, and how, he's, and how he has caught, and, and then you can sort of like go away, have a think about it, see how, if you, um, how you fished it yourself and if there's been anything, you know, anything there that's been different to how the winners, the winners caught, especially on venues like this. Little things can make such a difference, you know, fishing against the mud line, 
and you could come off the mud line and just go into a little bit deeper water can just make all the difference, can't yeah, it? You know, definitely, um, definitely. Bait choice can be really important. There's lots of combinations between, you know, from having a having a good result to you know just feeling as if you know you're off the pace. You know, so it is. It is. The only thing I can say is, is if you don't mix it up you'll never ever sort of like change something. So if you're just going to keep going and doing the same thing, the only thing that can dictate something that's going to happen different is your peg and how strong your peg yeah. is. You know, it is where if you're fishing a similar sort of venue week in, week out, if you don't try and change something yourself, you'll never really, you know, you've got to mix it up a little bit. And sometimes that might just be that your rig might be right, but your feeding might be not quite right. So sometimes maybe putting a little bit of it, sometimes when you're, you're not catching, you might not be feeding enough. You know, for me, a big thing is, is always like wanting to feed bait can create something. You know, you'll be sometimes surprised, even though you're not catching anything. Um, yeah. You know, putting more bait in can be something that can be a big thing that's missed, you know. I think from my point of view, one thing that I see a lot of people doing is just fishing to catch a few fish. And if you're wanting to move on from fishing a match and enjoying it to actually trying to win, the biggest single thing I could pick up on, without going too much into detail, is make sure you're fishing the winning method. So if you came to Partridge today, the winning method is probably going to be shallow fishing. That is what you need to do if you want to be trying to win the match. So try and find out what the winning methods are going to be, and you'll gain that through experience, and make sure you're fishing that winning method. You might not be quite as consistent, but it's going to give you a much better chance of winning. Now, back onto the questions. I think we've got a few on YouTube, but for some reason I can't see the comments on YouTube. So I'm just going to disappear off screen a minute. I'll go and read a couple of the questions and I'll be back. But for now, I'll just leave you watching Paul. I don't know if you can hear me, but obviously from like how today's gone, we've, you know, we've had a cracking day fishing and then we've caught against the mud, we've caught against the mud line. And the best method today was just fishing like a slot meet across there. So it was, I pushed it through a five mil cutter twice, and then I've actually pushed it through um, a four mil maggot riddle, just to really sort of fine it up. I mean, there is there is a case that maybe I'd done it a little bit too fine, and I hadn't picked up on it, he likes it a little bit coarser, which is, can be like the difference between catching 60 pound and 80 pound, 80 pound, 120 pound. So little things can make a difference, you know, and these are the things that we've got to try and, you know, if you can surround yourself with good anglers as well, you know, if you can get to know somebody that's catching a few more fish than yourself, you just might just pick up that odd tip from them that can make a big difference. That looks like a good fish, is it? Yeah, possibly it might be foul looked. I'm not 100% no, sure. No, you don't foul look them, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I've, we've actually got the keep in. We're not using it. We've had one or two fish just, cr just go underneath the landing stage. So, and I've lost a couple of rigs today on it. So, not been using too heavy a main line. So, with these little light rigs. So uh, we've actually just snuck the kit, the keep in just to stop them from going underneath the. Um, uh, underneath make sure we don't lose this one on camera. No, it's actually foul. Don't, it's don't lose it on camera, will you? No, I won't. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I mean, okay. Well, shallow fishing's brilliant. We'll maybe just have a couple more fish over there. Eh? But the other place we've got a lot of fish today is in the margins as well, yeah, isn't it? So that's, that's maybe right, something yeah. we can have a little, a little look at while we're on camera and just show that different approach, can't we? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. All those people who've got a question on YouTube. The ones that are on there at the minute, Barry's just writing down for me, so I'll go and grab that back off him in a second. We will answer them. I don't know why, but I can only see the questions on Facebook for some reason. Talking of which, got a great question here from someone who I know you you know, it, what, Simon what, what, Fadden. What's my favourite ice cream? No, Simon Fadden, he says, don't you think you should put some sun cream on those milk bottles? Milk bottles? I don't know what he means, but I think he could be having a go at your is legs. That something that's, oh, is that what he says? I've not heard that one before. <laughs> So a bit of sun cream, that'll sort them out, no problem. Right, I'll just go and grab these other questions. We'll try and get these answered. Well, it's nice to hear from Simon. Had a great time with him down at White Acres. Right then. You're right, Simon. My legs are looking a bit pale, aren't they? Are you ready for this one? We've got... This will actually probably suit what we're going to do next, actually. This is from Mark Bowyer, and he says, how would you attack the far bank on this snake lake? Now, I know how you're going to fish in the margins is probably very similar to the far bank, isn't it? So maybe after this fish, we'll, we'll have a look at that, and this will sort of answer your question. Although he's fishing on his own bank, 
It's going to be a very similar approach to if you were further across, isn't it? Yeah, depth's really important. I mean, you know, that's something that uh, these snake lakes is what actual depth you've actually got. So, you know, on some of the pegs, it may be just be like a cliff face. Certain times of year, um, like obviously we're in springtime at the moment, so you're probably not going to be wanting too shallow. Probably around about 14 to 16 inches will probably be about right at the moment. But then in a week or two's time, when that sun's it, then you might be wanting 12 inches to, oh, that's a lovely to fish 10 again. inches. That's yeah, a good fish, isn't it? It's a nice fish. That one's in the mouth. Nice like, little ghosty, ghosty F1. Some lovely, um, it's like a, a hybrid, but they're uh, different. Yeah, colors, they're like, they? beautiful, uh, aren't they? When we were at White here, because a few weeks ago, there was a lot of these fish, yeah. isn't there? These ghost F1s, yeah. and they're lovely, gorgeous, but they? they actually feed them. The feed a bit different to F1s a lot of the time, don't they? They're a yeah. bit finicky and, right, yeah. and a bit harder to catch sometimes. So going back to the question, I mean, you know, with the mud line today, we've had 15 inches right tight in there. We've had 15 inches, which has probably been about right, to be honest with you. I wasn't, uh, of course, we, we, we kicked off and it probably took about four feeds before we got an indication. And then as time, we weren't putting a great deal in. We, we haven't big potted. We haven't catapulted any bait. We've just kindered in small amounts of bait, a little bit of mush meat, push through the riddle like I said, small five mil cube, again for me, smaller cubes of meat really works well for, for F1s, and, but we have used quite a heavy rig, sometimes with meat fishing you can have lighter rigs, and, but uh, we've actually sort of used like a muddy rig, uh, which has took six number, six I think number nines. Before we keep going through this, do you want to put the shallow rig down and you can maybe show them your edge rig, yeah. and we'll have a little fish in the edge and you can sort of go through it a little bit as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, just before we do that, I've got a question off Dave Laff, who's asking what pole you're using, says it's very stiff. The pole is actually just something we're looking at at the minute. It's a sample that we've got, so it's obviously not going to be available yet, uh, possibly in the future, but we've got a lot of work to do with that. So, um, yeah, not a lot I can tell you there, unfortunately. But, yeah, moving on to obviously the far bank and the margin, really similar approach this, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Then, you know, like a shallow with the water, you know, it's probably like something that flips on its head, doesn't make sense, but the shallower the water, sometimes the heavier, heavier the rig you've got to be. If you can imagine, if you were stirring something that's a foot deep, six deep, deep, the whole water moves, where if you were stirring something that's three foot deep, only the top surface would, would yeah. move. So down there is still quite stable, you know, it's yeah. not being affected. So you sometimes need a heavier rig in shallower water. So again, so you like, hook yeah, bit. that's right, exactly, yeah. So. We, you don't want it because obviously you put your bait in you want to keep it somewhere as close to your hook bait as possible sorry as your feed as possible and the, the, that nice heavy rig so even if it moves six inches over there you can just lift it up and just yeah and just drop it back in bang over I mean, where you I you're think in. what we could do here obviously we've got the advantage of being able to show everything so we can actually get Barry to probably move the camera a little bit yeah you can feed some bait down the edge and just show exactly what you mean about this this sort of tight pile of bait and getting your rig exactly where you want. Yeah. I mean, Perfect. obviously today you're fishing with... I don't know if Barry's still watching me, but that's what we you know. When we talk about mush meat, again, Adam was just on about it earlier. You like use it slightly coarser, don't yeah. you? But that's something. You can add a little bit of ground bait to it, which can add a little bit of flavour to it, a little bit of fish mealy flavour to it. But at times, there's nothing better than this, especially like into the months that we're going to be moving into now, where it's just basically push through a riddle two or three times and added water to it. And it can, you can create, you can have more water to it, which then will just add like a little bit more of a milky um, cloud, cloud to come off it, don't you? So to attract fish, so, or you can actually just sometimes I'll just put it back through a little strainer, press the press the uh, water out of it. It just keeps it a little bit, yeah, and that, a little bit less mushy, but it's still going down in a nice little tight pile. Yeah, and that approach you're going for today, obviously you want to keep it quite tight, and you're in that shallow yeah. water, your heavy rig, and you've got to put it right on top. So just as you yeah. ship out now. Obviously, so probably about the amount that I would start with. Again, I don't fish the venue week in, week out, but obviously if I, if I came here for a one-off match, then that would probably be a start with. I mean, I don't want to start putting you know big pots in straight away, but if I wasn't fishing down there and I, want, and I was still catching over there, but I still wanted to target some fish down there at some time, then I would probably just swing around every 10, 15 minutes, just put my kit down and just make the effort to swing around and just... Uh, cupping something very similar to that, maybe a fraction more, big walnut. I mean, that's probably like a big hazelnut, that is. So a big walnut, and then 
you know, probably three or four times before he actually went on it. Right, come on, let's get in there and catch okay. a fish. Right. You haven't caught one for ages. Right, okay. <laughs> so, we'll try and get the camera in on the float now, just as, as Yanni puts his rig in, and he'll be able to explain exactly what he means about how he's going to feed the bait. Right, let's get this there. And like we were saying, this is exactly how we'd fish further across to the island, isn't That's it? Right. For uh, Mark, who was asking that question. So obviously you've potted that bait in nice and accurate. You've got a marker to aim at. That's right, yep. And then you're going to keep your rig positioned exactly on top of that, aren't you? That's right, yeah. And then what's what I mean? What's next after that? So it's just a case of just like just seeing, in, just getting the information from what's actually happening. Whether you get indications straight away, which will obviously tell you that there's, there's fish actually already there. If you pre if you pre-fed it, and you're going to get indications straight away, then obviously you've got something to work with. If not, then I wouldn't wait too long before I actually come out and repot in again. And probably if I, if I came in and out two or three times, then if I didn't catch, then I would move on to something else. So probably going to give it seven or eight minutes. So just as a, a sort of a quick round up to that, how would you attack the far bank of a snake lake? Going to pick a depth, reasonably shallow water, probably no more than two foot, I would say. Yeah. Looking for somewhere nice and flat. I'm going to feed your bait really accurate like Annie just did then and keep your rig right on top of it and then the next thing is to just look for indications on your floor if you're getting a lot of indications you're probably fishing a bit too shallow replumb a bit tighter to the far bank and try and cut them liners out and get proper bites likewise if you're not getting any signs maybe just put another four or six inches on your depth plumb up back further away from the bank and just repeat the process and it's a really nice simple way of fishing most important things, just get yourself in exactly the depth that you're gonna to wanna to be in, which you can judge by the signs on your float. And then make sure you're fishing there nice and accurate. You've got your positive rig and you can keep your rig right on top of the bay. As you say, that second, that's a little something on these snake lakes that even though you're coming back out to feed, sometimes the actual pot there and your float there and your, your actual presence there actually stops the fish from coming in. So just, just coming out, Put some more bait in it was noticeable then that, the, that even before that had actually got to the bottom the fish had actually been it's moved on to that little bit of bait that i previous fed yeah and i think that's the shallow water isn't it and the water is quite clear today the fish not particularly wanting to be under your float probably yeah so another question we've got uh i haven't got a name on this one i'm sorry about that but it's i'm going to white acres next week and i'm wanting to fish the rover match what swims and bait would you recommend well I think bait wise, generally it's probably going to be a lot of pellets, isn't it? Meat's banned other than in the festivals, which we obviously fished the other week. Yeah. Uh, I think for F1s, you'll be looking at four mil pellets or maybe casters shallow. Yeah. Um, and then for your bigger carp, six and eight mil pellets, maybe a little bit of corn, yeah. ground bait or micros for in the edge. Uh, pegs wise, I mean, what pegs would you pick? Maybe top three each, we'll say. Um, one of the in the arms, if you've got a nice ripple going through, if, you know, if you've got a wind blowing into one of the arms on Pollowing, yeah, that might be um, somewhere where a target in the 40s or late 30s. If the wind's going in, try and get yourself a bit of an end peg, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, some huge fish being caught down there, yeah. I mean, an obvious peg to look at is sort of 15, 16, 17 on twin oaks, yeah, great pegs, lots of big carp, lots of F1s, um, probably something like method feeder or pellet waggler to the far bank. <laughs> Micros around your feeder, uh, eight mil pellets on the waggler, and then a short pole with eight mil pellets or corn. That'll do really well. Um, after that, probably I'd maybe look at going somewhere on Trelawney. There's a lot of big F1s in Trelawney, isn't it? You catch a really big weight. I'd probably go maybe between sort of 10 and 14 area on Trelawney uh, and look again to fish hard pellets on the short pole, probably four mils, six mil on the hook and loose feed either four mil pellets or preferably casters but that can get a bit pricey on the long pole shallow feeder, little method yeah feeder little method feeder bait. with ground bait some maggots on the hook will catch you a lot of fish on on a lot of the lakes to be honest that'll work yeah, on it catch you a lot of right. f1s uh so yeah pegs wise i'd look at maybe that 10 to 14 area on trelawney 13 to 17 maybe 12 to 17 on twin oaks uh you say maybe an end peg on Pollowin. Some great pegs on Jenny's, uh, something like peg 16, loads of Carasios, shallow and on a method feeder. Loads of choice, but I think before and maybe in a couple of days before the match, uh, if you just speak to the lads in the shop and they'll give you a good idea of some pegs to fish as well. So that's always going to help. What is nice, Adam always draws the pegs he wants. Yeah, well, there's no point in sitting on bad ones, is there? So he would probably be the person to answer that. <laughs> now, he's a good question, and this is one that 
I've been asked a lot of times and it's one where I feel a lot of people actually go wrong. So Dave Laff says, do you wash the fat off your meat with hot water? I don't, I always find it, uh, that's the attraction. You know, it's a time of year, we all, you know, I think it's the attraction. Little bit yeah, what you exactly do. the same. I never, I did used to wash it off, try and get it all to sink, but mm. if you look at specimen carp anglers, they all use a lot of salt. They yeah. use salt in the baits and meat fat is basically all salt, isn't it? And it's what the fish love. It's what carp want to eat. Yeah. Um, and I think by washing it off, you're taking away a lot of what the fish like. So although it's a bit of mess, it's worth putting up with because I definitely think it captures you more fish. Yeah, I know it can be a little bit messy, can't it, with this, you know, with the fat, but, you know, a little clean day. But if you've had a good day fishing, I think you'd be quite happy to uh, yeah. wash your pole down at the yep. end of the day. And... Right, we've got another question from YouTube. Let me just find this. This one's from Brian Dixon. If you're fishing with a pellet rig on the bottom and you feel they were coming off the bottom a bit, would you change rig or just take a couple of inches off the rig you're using? Um it's a funny question this not so much a funny question but it's a funny situation to be in isn't it because if you feel like the fish are a few inches off the bottom it's a really really hard place to catch them isn't it yeah, I do. I find that. and i think you've got one of two choices you can either change and feed more regular and try and draw the fish shallow properly waiting fish for them with proper shallow rigs or especially with hard pellets move away from where you're fishing and just start fishing again and just feed a small bit of bait and try and catch them again set traps catch a fish and if you feel like they're coming off the bottom they're probably not there's probably a bit too much bait in your peg often and it causes problems with foul hookers you can move lines and just start again yeah. i think shall we for whatever reason they're not wanting to come in the edge other, shall just we add an indication of because it's occurred to the camera or <laughs> we've caught so many fish down there and it's the first time we've gone in and and not caught not them. An I've just had I an think, indication. I've got no bait on. Oh, not... I'll tell you what, have another minute and then we'll we'll get back across because before we actually finish up, we want to see a few more fish caught, don't we? So I'll tell you what I'll do. While you're fishing down the edge, I'll prime your you gonna line across caught? there back up. Let's get some fish going. I'm going to give you one more minute just and one. then I want to see some fish caught. And if you don't, I'm going to jump on your box and catch them myself. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, that's that approach down the edge. I think one thing that you haven't mentioned, you're feeding that meat mush. Um, and I think a lot of the reason for that is the smaller the particles you're feeding in that edge, the more fish you draw in, don't you? If you just fed five or six cubes, which is probably a similar volume of bait, yeah. you're not going to draw the fish in, are you? Where no. that meat mush or ground bait or micro pellets and all these type of things tend to draw more fish into your peg, don't they? That's right, yeah. And that's the reason you've chose to feed that over the sort of mush type bait yeah. but oh we've got a boil I mean, oh there's the one there, there. You can make that out but we've just had a i mean looking at it at the minute out realistically in a match this is a good question i suppose you're catching one of chuck shallow over there yeah without me pressuring you to go down the edge and show what you would do if you were fishing down the edge and across would you have came off that shallow line uh, probably not no i mean again you get a feel for the weight that you you've targeted you know before the match and you know whether you you know it's Again, you know, as we spoke about earlier, didn't we? It's like, you know, decisions and whether you think that... You know, oh, there we go, look. That. I was just about to say, let's make the... Oh, it oh. was a foul that. It was a, Sometimes that's what you, you get, don't you, when you first start down the margins, you know. I was just going to say, let's make a change now, and then get back across there. Go, go me on, one one you can have one go. more minute. On, that's you. all I'm giving you, one oh. minute. And by the way, everyone, don't try this in a match because I think I would probably be cheating. <laughs> But I can't believe you haven't, you haven't mentioned our biggest big fish challenge that uh, went Biggest out fish challenge, night. yeah. For anyone who hasn't watched our latest YouTube video, we had our big fish challenge. Uh, I won't give away the results, but I mean, there was only one winner and it was only ever going to be that person, I think. Yeah. Not saying who it was, yeah. but this, this person out of the two of us was always going to win the challenge. Uh, so yeah, take a look at that on the YouTube channel. And we didn't actually have any scales, so we're relying on you to vote um, and tell us which fish was the biggest. But at the minute, it's a bit of a landslide, isn't it? Well, I don't know. My mum and dad thought that I won. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, oh, he's foul. Look, that I think no, as well, haven't no, you? It's only a small oh, you're going to get me with your pole, look. 
I mean, you were. There you go. Real good. We yeah, so take a look at that. But Yanni today has tried to count the fish he caught for that challenge, which we done three weeks ago. So uh, I'm not sure we'll give him that I one. Get me injury time. I was still, but, I was still in injury look, time. Just to make sure, I mugged a nice big mirror, didn't I, to, to just top that one as well. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, take a look at that. Right, do we want to, for the last, we're probably going to be on for another 10 or 15 minutes. For that last bit, we'll go back across and have a nice little bag up end into the day. Good. What do you think? Good, Cam. We wouldn't want people think you've made a mess of the peg and gone down the edge too early, would we? No. So, I've fed it up for you. Now, back to the big fish challenge video we had. <laughs> what we've also done with that is we've got a little prize. So we've got a 50 pound frenzy voucher for the winner of that prize to spend on whatever frenzy tackle they want. Uh, can everyone hear me okay with this helicopter flying over and disturbing me? Yeah, £50 prize, and that is going to be chosen at random from the comments. You don't particularly have to guess anything or get a right answer. Just comment in there, leave something about the video, whoever got the biggest fish, not sure who you would vote for. Um, leave it on there, and I think probably on Tuesday, Monday's bank holiday, so I think we'll maybe wait till Tuesday, draw out the winner. Um, no, sorry, I'm being told I'm wrong. Just give me one second and I'll tell you the winning day. 22nd of May. Sorry, I'm, I'm miles away. So you've got ages. But get on there. Get your comment in. Try and win that voucher. And uh, hopefully enjoy watching the video as well. And uh, I certainly enjoyed winning. I mean, watching the video. So, yeah, get back onto that. But you've gone back across there now. Uh, obviously, it's been getting primed up, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you haven't fed anything there, but I'll make sure I'll get a bit in. And... I think one thing, one thing to mention straight away. Uh, one thing to mention straight away is you've only just gone back in, and the fish seem really shallow already. Yeah. And I think a lot of that is to do with the the amount of cover over there, isn't it? So all that cover makes the fish sort of want yeah, to fish much shallower. Yeah, that's right. uh, I'm just having a little look on Facebook, see if I can see any more questions I've missed. Da, 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 da. Make sure the rig we've got that covered this when will you be fishing up north again we've got off adrian smith well me i'll be fishing tomorrow at the oaks for fishermania hopefully sat on the best peg and catching loads and loads of fish uh, what about you? You'll be back around there tomorrow or somewhere, I guess. I'm back in the shop tomorrow, the tackle shop tomorrow. I'm back in all day tomorrow, then I'm out on Sunday at Lindholm on the shop final. Winter League shop final. I know it's May and it's sun's are out, but we have actually got our shop final on Sunday. Right. So it's quite an important match for yeah. uh, the shop lads. I'm looking forward to it. And is that something you've run every year, is it? Yeah, run it for 17 years now. How many times have you won? Uh, a few times, I don't count. Don't count. Yeah, I'm not counting. I tell you what, them uh, fish are really shallow now, really aren't they? Shallow, aren't they? Yeah, really shallow. But I've actually drawn a good peg. I've drawn peg three on the Willard. So <laughs> no, yeah, it's not like you. Yeah, I found out this afternoon I've drawn peg three on the Willard, so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Were you expecting already? the wind to be blown that way, I suppose? If it's a southwest, it will be going in there, but I think it's a southeast, so it might just be coming across me out. Might just be missing me slightly, but. Hopefully, it'll, uh, we'll get a little ripple going. And I think um, how you're fishing now is probably, obviously, maybe not up to a far bank like you are, but it'll be a similar approach. I want it cast as shallow. I will have an edge swim for definite. I mean, you know. A bit of cover there. Is that where that, you've got a tree down the edge? It's gone. Oh, has it? <laughs> the right. last time I drew it, I had a good day there. And I, had that, I have actually, thinking back, won the final off that peg. But I did actually catch under that tree, but it's gone. So right. Adam's, uh, Adam, um, Aaron's uh, took all the trips took the tree out so i mean if you're nice and you ask aaron nicely he might go and plant it tonight plant it one back in yeah you could have a go at that well he, so, gives, he gives us that much room while we're fishing that's oh that's a good I'm, fish this, isn't it what elastic have you got on so i've got the, i think that's something we haven't mentioned we mentioned your rig we haven't mentioned yeah, we haven't we mentioned that you let them go under your net have we <laughs> there we go they're, cra they're crafty aren't they well, I think I've done everything. I've done my oh no, I've done my done my rig. There you go. That's all we had the landing. That's all we had to keep it in. That's the third time so, that that's happened today. Yeah, going back to elastic. Then now we haven't got a rig on it. There what is that the elastic you generally use? You wanted for? to have a look at this. <laughs> that's all I've got left. 
Is that the rig you'd often generally use yeah, for shallow fish? Yeah, yeah, the fair fair. I mean, I've moved on to the hybrid elastics a lot just recently. Last couple of years, they've definitely become more popular, haven't they? And it's, you've still got that little bit of soft, soft suppleness from yeah. the start off, but then you do get that extra little bit. What's of, that, the 8 to 10? That's the 8 to 10. Yeah, hybrid, 8 to 10 yeah. FXT hybrid. Right. And I think it's... The th other thing with hybrids for me is they're a little bit lighter inside of your pole, aren't they? Absolutely. So fishing, yeah, fishing at depth. when you're fishing like you are and you're lifting all the time at these bites and just that little bit of extra weight does make a difference at long distances, doesn't it? That's right, yes. Right, we're going to be on for another 10 minutes or so watching Yanni bagging, I think. Um, if you've got any more questions, get them in. If not, we'll watch him catch a few more fish. Uh, and it'll be interesting, actually, to see how this rig works different. I think it's good for probably rud by the look of it. Well, you can You're see the difference. You? You're loving <laughs> this now, aren't you? I've been, been waiting. Really he's well. done absolutely brilliant, hasn't he, up to now? And now, look what's happened. He's broke a rig off. He's caught a rud. But oh. what's that? I'm back on a serious note. Have you caught a rud today? Yeah, it was bigger than that. Oh. <laughs> back on a serious note, does that tell you anything, or are you just expecting you will catch an odd and yeah, amongst I mean, your other fish? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, there's one, there was one or two. There's been one or two good in, in, mixed in, but uh, it's been that good that they haven't had a chance to get No, in, it's but, the only uh, thing that surprised me. I've not really seen anything swirl, and it's a couple of times you spooked a fish. That last go in, you spooked a couple. It seemed like they're very, very shallow, and it's amazing with F1s, isn't it, how... They can come right to the surface like that and you just don't know they're there. Yeah. And I think that's where that's where your rigs with a float on that you can see can often outscore your sort of non-float rigs or your jiggers because you see your line bites. Absolutely. Where, I mean, if you were fishing with just a piece of line now or a jigger and you were fishing 18 inches deep, would you know that the fish are only 8 inches? Exactly. And there's obviously a time and a place where it works absolutely brilliant and it's, they're both deadly methods, but... Yeah. I much prefer float for that reason, and, and I know you do as well. Another, I mean, another tip for shallow fishing, in, and I mean, this isn't just on snake lakes, this can be on, you know, your open lakes as well when you're shallow fishing. For me, the work, one of my biggest uh, of a, a bits of advice is, is the feeding between hooking the fish, shipping back in and going back out again. You know, and it's, it's hard, you know, it's the work that you put in between now and then, so because the pole's not over the head, and the fish are actually, the fish are feeding freely. When you actually go in with your rig, the fish are so much more confident. So the work that you can work that you can do between hooking the fish and actually going back into the swim is really key. It can be yeah. really, really important. Just really prime it up. That's right. And get ready for your next fish, basically. Especially I mean, when the water's clear. Yeah. Adam, you know, especially when the water's clear. And I know we've got a little bit of colour in the water here today, but if it was a little bit clear and the fish are a little bit more nervous, that can really make you know, make a big difference. Yeah, and I think it it's something that I can certainly uh, admit to doing it, I suppose, is you can often be in a rush and catch the fish too quick almost yeah. i mean yeah. by now i'm already wanting to be back out hook another fish and yeah. well you might catch three or four really really fast um you might catch three or four really really fast and then not catch any more where if you'd have just been more steady like this feeding in between you might have caught 10 yeah. it might have took a little bit longer but you caught more fish so right. yeah i mean what have we have we got any more questions i don't think we've got any more questions to answer now so maybe We'll just catch a couple more fish, maybe hold them up for the camera, let people see some of these beautiful Partridge Lakes F1s, and uh, we'll maybe call it a day, get home, I'll get prepared for my Fishermania qualifier tomorrow, and you can uh, decide what you're going to sell in the shop tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> what, have got what have you got on? What have we got on here? This could be a car. That's a car, isn't it? That didn't feel like a car when I hooked Well, I, do you know what? I'm going to get off the box. I'm going to get out of your way a little bit. Look at that. This could be a lovely last fish, couldn't it? We can get this in, hold him up. Which one? Let everyone see it. I wonder if this could be bigger than that one that you hooked earlier. No, I wouldn't have thought so. No, I didn't think it would be. No. Oh, I think no. that one I had was the biggest one in the lake, wasn't it? Oh, no. What old length have you got on? 012. Or 11. 012. Or 12. Oh, 11, is it? Yeah, 011, yeah. isn't it? That's right, yeah. You're fishing heavy then, as always. I've got every confidence in you. Has anyone else ever seen these lost? <laughs> what 
have I got to beat? Three pound? That's why it was three and a half, I would have thought. That's what it was. Did you get what? a picture of it? Yeah, I did. Well, you took well. one for me. Well. I think one thing to mention here, actually, obviously fishing light gear, really, fishing for F1s, if you Ooh. do hook a big carp, you can see you're not in any rush to get it in, are you? That you might as well take your time, mightn't you? Yeah. If it was a match, I mean, you don't want to lose them. Take your time. It gives you a chance, like you said, to keep priming your peg up as well. Yeah, that's right. And... Do you want me to prime the peg? Go on, prime your peg up. Even though we're going to make this double-figure carp last fish, I think. Not really. I think it's, uh, it might even be foul luck. To be honest, if we wait for you to land it, we might be here till midnight as well. You're, are you on my side? <laughs> Just one thing, while um, while Yanni's landing this fish, these live type of things are something we're going to be looking to do quite regular, I think. I think it's really nice how people can ask questions, we can get zoomed in on the float, we can show the tactics, show the rigs, and hopefully show a few fish getting caught. So, if you've got any ideas of things you'd like to see us doing on these lives, whether it might be edge fishing for carp, shallow fishing for carp, feeder fishing, any ideas and anything you'd like to see live and think we could put across well for you, let us know in the comments, either on YouTube, in the video, on Facebook. Um, we're always looking for ideas for this sort of thing and places we can go, venues to try. So any of that type of thing you want to leave, we can't promise we'll go to them all, we can't promise we'll do everything, but we'll definitely do our best because we want to see a lot of variety, a lot of different methods, a lot of different tactics, and hopefully, that's, that's not even that big. Yeah, and hopefully um, let everyone learn a thing or two and hopefully help out where we can. But how big is it? I think we should have had some guesses how big this is going to be, shouldn't we? Biggest fish of the day. I think another special thank you uh, to uh, Partridge Lakes as well. Yeah, I mean, beautiful I mean, venue, isn't so it? so welcome today. Beautiful venue, really well looked after and absolutely full of fish. You're going to hold this one up and let them have a look. <laughs> Are we still on the big fish challenge? Oh, there's his head. Oh yeah, that one's heads bigger than the rest of the fish put together, isn't it? The size of that. What are you giving me there? It's, well, it's got to be eight pound, has it? Yeah. <laughs> hold him up. Yeah, that day you were right. It was eight pound. I oh, don't hold him up. <laughs> but I think that's a lovely fish, isn't it? To just to finish up on. Um, like I said, I've noticed there's some comments already come in about things you'd like to see. But if there's anything we can show live, things you want to know, um, places you think we can go. Let us know in the comments on either Facebook or YouTube. Um, and as well as that, if there's anything from today's session that we haven't gone through, you want to know, we're more than willing to sort of come on the comments, yeah. leave you a little reply or send us a message. Feel free to do that. We're both yeah, willing to answer them. Yeah, big thanks to Partridge again, yeah? Yeah, big, big thanks, thanks to Partridge Lakes. Lakes. Big thanks to Yanni for uh, catching a few fish. Yeah, exactly. Sorry I didn't hold that one up there, but he offered me eight pounds and I took it. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks very much for watching. Take a look through some of the other videos on the YouTube channel if you get a chance. And don't forget again to like 